This is Malik, and he's a product owner. Malik has a vision for Home Sliced. He doesn't know the details of what the product will do, but he knows why he's building the product and what problem it'll solve and for who. And here are the stakeholders. They are the people who will use, support, or in any way be affected by the product. In the case of Home Slice, that includes two main groups, people looking for homes and people looking for housemates. There are other stakeholders also, such as Terry, the founder, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just focus on those two groups. Malik's vision is that the stakeholders will love Home Slice, use it all the time, and tell their friends about it. Upon joining the company, Malik has been working closely with the stakeholders to confirm his understanding of what they need. Malik's job as product owner is to be the voice of the stakeholders to understand their needs and express them as user stories. A user story is a structured way of expressing an idea or need. For example, with Home Slice, users need to be able to search for homes, and that could be a user story. Now, Malik and the stakeholders have no shortage of ideas. Malik gets bombarded with loads of ideas daily. And it can be really easy to just say yes to all the ideas, especially because the product owner simply has to add it to the backlog without making a commitment on when the idea will be implemented. But if Malik did this, his backlog would eventually become unmanageable. And here's why. Malik works with a team of four developers. Let's say that they can complete on average three to four stories per week. But ideas are easier to come up with than working software. And the stakeholders come up with, let's say, 10 ideas on average per week. If Malik tries to satisfy all the stakeholders, pretty soon he'll get a huge unmanageable backlog. And if he tried to push the development team to deliver more, well, that won't be sustainable they'll burn out and they will eventually get frustrated. And that's just not healthy for the Scrum team. So an important part of Malik's job is to decide what not to build and take the consequences of that decision. In fact, saying no is such a critical part of his job that Malik practices it every day in front of the mirror. So the product owner decides what goes in and what goes out. And he also decides the sequencing of things, what to build now and what to build later and that's a hard job, so he doesn't do it alone. He does it in collaboration with the team and the stakeholders. A scrum team that works well together at a healthy pace can then also plan to release product to stakeholders regularly. And so the communication between team members and the stakeholders is critical. But it is important to note that while the product owner is the voice of the stakeholders, he's not the only one engaging stakeholders. The development team should have open access to stakeholders and that way Malik can be supported in his role and he doesn't have to always get into the details, allowing him to look at the big picture. Now the role of the product owner at the most basic level is to maximize the value of the product by focusing the work of the Scrum development team in the right areas. And he does this by prioritizing the user stories with the most important stories on top and less important stories on the bottom. That way, the team can pick up stories from the top of the backlog to work on. To prioritize, Malik needs to have some idea of the value of each story, as well as the size. Some stories are critically important, while others are just bonus features. And some stories take just a few hours to build, while others take much longer. Value and size are what helps Malik prioritize intelligently. Like here, these two stories have roughly the same size, but different values, so build this one first. And these stories have roughly the same value, but different sizes, so build this one first. Okay, that sounds easy enough, but wait a second. How does Malik know the value of a story? And how does he know the size? Well, he doesn't. It's a guessing game, and a game that everyone is involved in. So every good product starts with a customer need and a vision for how to solve that need. And the product backlog is a result of refining that vision into concrete deliverables. But how does the product owner go about building a backlog from a product vision? Well, the reality is the Scrum Guide doesn't provide much guidance on this. 
But this is the first and quite a critical step in the product development cycle. And so in the next tutorial, we'll look at how the product manager can go about converting his or her product vision into a product backlog. I'll see you soon. Thank you.